The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There is no disguise which can, for long, conceal love where it exists or simulate it where it does not. So said the French philosopher, to which we might add, there is no chain so strong, no wall so high that can imprison love when its time has come to be free. But what is it? It says what it is. See? Right. It is... A nuclear warhead. A nuclear warhead? That is what it says. <laughs> what can we do with a nuclear warhead? <laughs> what can we do? We can sell it. <laughs> sell it? Who would want to purchase a nuclear warhead? <laughs> Our mystery drama, A Drink with Dionysius, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Breeze there the man... With soul so dead, who never to himself hath said, This is my own, my native land. I'm not sure. These seem to be such cynical, skeptical times, so alien to honest sentiment, so impatient with the traditional values. But perhaps it's all a pose. Perhaps underneath, as the songwriter said, every heart beats true under red, white, and blue. Well, our mission today is to examine the heart of a most unlikely patriot, one Sprinkles Magoon, and his story shall be told by a man who is both his best friend and his worst enemy, Detective Sergeant Francis K. Flummer. I wouldn't say I was Sprinkles' best friend, and since Sprinkles himself was his own worst enemy, I'm going to fall short there, too. Uh, what you could say, without fear or favor, is that Sprinkles was a crook. And I'm a cop. So from time to time, we meet in the way of uh, routine business. Hello there, Sprinkles. Uh, I do not uh, believe we are acquainted. I you feeling? I don't know anything. What's doing? I have not heard anything. I have not seen anything. All right, Sprinkles. How are they treating you? Nobody has ever treated Sprinkles McCoon. He always pays his own way. And now, if you will be so kind as to excuse me, I cannot afford to be seen in public chattering with the police side. Uh, that is the German language for the cops. And so it will go. You knew Sprinkles was doing this and that here and there, now and then. But he really wasn't bothering anybody too much. After a while, in the department, you learn that as far as certain things are concerned, it's best to live and let live, if you know what I mean. Well, anyhow, one night, I'm sitting at the desk, looking at the clock on the wall and the snow on the sidewalk, hoping that nobody's going to do anything bad to somebody till after midnight, at which time my relief will have to handle it, when the phone rings. Flummer! Flummer! Yeah, this is Sergeant Flummer. Who? Me. Who are you? This is Sprinkles. Sprinkles McGoon. Oh, Sprinkles. What's up? Hey, Sprinkles, you still there? Yes, sir. I am present. It, it is just... It is just what? It is uh, just... I am wondering. Wondering? About what? I am wondering if I am doing the right thing. In what connection? In this connection. Uh, talking with the gendarmes. Why? That is a French language word for the cops. Well, uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, uh, would you like to come up here? 
Why? Why? Uh, I, uh, I believe I may have killed somebody. Sprinkles. Uh, therefore, can you come right over? I'm on my way. I thank you. Hey, well, wait, wait a minute. Where, where, where are you, Spr- Sprinkles? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess that's Sprinkles. Yes? I uh, believe I neglected to give you a final piece of information. Yes, yeah, Sprinkles, where are you? I am at 98 St. Regis Place. 98 St. Regis? Apartment 10B. Give me apartment. Hey, Sprinkles, what's going on? It is big, Sergeant. Very big. Huge. <laughs> St. Regis Place. Sprinkles must have been stepping up in class. Or he'd be doing a high rent district. Basically, he was a dip. You know, a pickpocket. He liked to work the crowds. 98 St. Regis was a luxury high rise. I flashed my star at the flunky and he run me up in the elevator. Then I padded down a thickly carpeted corridor and come to a stop in front of 10B. Sergeant Flummer. Sprinkles. What happened to you? That's blood. I have been shot. Shot? The bullet has merely grazed my forehead. Uh, you should see the other guy. What other guy? Uh, he is resting behind the couch. Hey. He's dead. Oh, yes. He is dead. And, uh... You killed him, Sprinkles? Yes, you could uh, you could say I was the instrument of his departure. You killed him? And here is the gun. Now look, Sprinkles, this ain't your style. Well, have you ever heard it said the leopard will change his spots? Yeah, 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 but that's for leopards, not for pussycats like you. You do me an injustice, Sergeant, if you will not believe I ventilated Mr. Cherry Berry. Who? Mr. Cherry Beery. Oh, for crying out loud, Sprinkles. You mean I'm going to have to arrest you for murder? I do not know what else you can do. Murder? How could you get mixed up in murder? I did not know it would come to this. But you're a pickpocket. A good one. I can no longer earn an honest living as a pickpocket. I'm a victim of progress. What's that? Pity the poor pickpocket. He is obsolete. I am the victim of what is called the cashless society. The cashless society? Sure. There is no longer any cash walking around the street. You lift the wallet, what do you get? Credit cards, traveler's checks. Oh, yeah. I cannot live on little plastic cards, now can I? (sighs) No, I guess not. But you still haven't told me why you had to shoot this Mr. Chiri Beery. Yeah, yeah. It is a long story. Sprinkles, you better let me hear it. Just start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. The beginning. You could say it all began when this female individual, whose name I shall not reveal, but shall refer to as Boston Sadie, encountered me in the saloon, which I shall likewise not identify but which shall here and after be known as Frisco Charlie's. Well, look who we got here. Sprinkles McGoom. Sadie. Ah, Boston Sadie. In the flesh. You have added a generous amount of fat, Sadie. Married life must agree with you. Oh, no, it don't. Oh, oh I am truly sorry to hear that. Look, Sprinkles, I got a little proposition. Interested? Uh, why, Sadie, I thought you were turning honest. Uh, yes, yeah, so did I. You know, the little cottage in the country, the roses climbing over the fence, and the whippoorwills. Ah, uh, what's the use? Oh, I am indeed sorry to hear that there is a sour note in the symphony of your happiness. I thought I was marrying a civilian. So, didn't you? No. I married a thief. A thief? <laughs> I was under the impression that Elwood was an upright, legitimate member of society with a job. He's not an honest thief like you and me and the rest of us. No, he's the worst kind. The worst kind? 
he's a closet thief. Oh? He wants to steal, but he don't have the nerve. Oh, that is... that is bad. Oh, I thought it would be a new life for me. But on the wedding night, he said that uh, he was... Uh, Sadie, are you sure you would like to discuss this uh, intimate matter with me? He said, darling, I have a confession to make. Uh, are you sure you want me to listen? He said, dearest, I want you to show me the ropes. He... he said that? Yeah, all my life, he said, I always wanted to be a cook, but I didn't know how. Please, my dearest, teach me. And did you? Oh, there went all my dreams are going straight. But when you love a guy... Oh, yeah, 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 love. I said to him, Angel, you can't just go out and become a thief, especially at your age, 35. True. If you possess the calling, it shows itself in early life, like uh, ballet dancers and violinists. Yeah, I said, uh, what do you want to be? A safe cracker, a pickpocket? You got to first become an apprentice. That is the truth. You got to work and study day and night. Uh, how I remember. But if that's what you want, I guess I can support us while you learn. And uh, just where is he attending school? Oh, he don't want to quit his job. Oh, but I... How but... can I quit the job, he says. I got vacation, sick leave, hospitalization, and in 20 years I get a pension. Well, those are extremely powerful arguments. But he ain't happy. So, oh, what is going to take place? Well... I figured out how he could get some action in the place where he works. Hey, good thinking. And, and just where is he employed? On an army base. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I do not understand. What is there to steal on an army base? Talents. No, no, but you're close. Close? Pistols. Oh. Well, uh... Oh, what do you say, Sprinkles? What do I say? <laughs> I, I say regretfully, no thank you. Forty-five caliber automatic. I am allergic to firearms. I am a peaceful citizen. Plenty of guys are in the market for a nice, new, shiny forty-five caliber automatic. I just remembered I have this appointment. Oh, see? come on. You don't have no appointment. I, but I do, with a psychiatrist. Oh, Sprinkle. And maybe you better see one, too, also, if you believe you can steal guns from an army post. But I figured how to do it. Then permit me to wish you the very best of luck. But it needs you, Sprinkles. Me? It needs your fingers. My fingers? Yeah. We know who carries the keys to the room where the guns are kept. Uh, I am sorry, Sadie, No, no, but... no, listen. There's nothing to it. I even talked it over with Mumbles Penny Feather. Mumbles? You have no idea how anxious Mumbles is to get a hold of some of that hardware. But, Sadie, I do not... Mumbles do... said to me... Well, we were sitting right at this table here. He said, you know who'd be right for a job like this? Sprinkles Magoon. Uh, uh, Mumble, so he's always had an exaggerated estimation of my talents. Sprinkles, your end, I guarantee, five grand. Five grand? Mm -hmm. I used to pick that up in a good week, Sadie. Look, it's waiting for us in a carton in that army storeroom. It's packed with forty-five caliber pistols. How do we get it out of there? You don't worry about that. You just get the keys. What are you telling me, Sprinkles? You got yourself into a caper to knock off some pistols from the army? They do have a lot of them, Sergeant. You know, you would think with all those atom bombs and all, they would not require any more small firearms. However... Never mind that. Did you actually steal the guns? Yes. How? I don't know. I only know what I did. And what did you do? I stole the keys. The keys. Yes, no matter how carefully and closely guarded an object may be, there is always the key that opens the lock, that secures the door. Therefore, one must also carefully guard the key. It also follows that one must also carefully guard the person who has access to the key. And one must also carefully guard all those who... <laughs> what you see where this goes? Somewhere there has to be a weak link. There is. And the chain snaps in Act Two. the veil through which I might not see. There was the door to which I found no key. 
such was the lot of Mr. Edward Fitzgerald, the poet of the Rubaiyat. Perhaps he might have found the key had he been fortunate to enlist the cooperation of our own Sprinkles Magoon, an expert at finding things, especially when they happen to be in someone else's pocket. We go forward. Now, Sprinkles, we have to proceed in an orderly fashion, you understand? Without a question, Sergeant Flummer. All right. This uh, Boston Sadie arranges to cut you into a scheme to swipe some forty-five caliber pistols from an army base, right? You are correct, Sergeant. Now, where does this guy on the floor, this very dead guy, come in? Uh, he does not come in just yet. He don't? No. It, it is still too early for him to make his appearance. All right, Sprinkles, where are we? Uh, we are still in Frisco, Charlie's, Bar and Quill. I am still engaged in conversation with Boston Sadie, talking the pros and the cons, the also's and the maybes. <clears throat> what you are saying to me is that all I have to do is get the key, right? Is that what you were saying? That's the whole grand opera. All you gotta do is get the key. Uh-huh. And where does that key happen to be? In somebody's pocket. Namely? Lieutenant Melvin McBride, also known as Moonface. Uh-huh. He had the key to the uh, gun room. Uh-huh. You got the picture down, Pat. You lift the key, you make a wax impression, then you slip the key back into Moonface's pocket. You follow this? I follow, I follow, but I do not know if I like where it is going. Oh, you're going to love it. You'll see. Now, we'll get the box with the guns, bring it to you, and you make the delivery to Mumbles. Pick up the cash, and we're home. But they will know the guns are gone the next day. How will they know? What, don't they check up on his situation? Sure, but Thorleaf is the inventory clerk. And uh, who, who, may I ask, is, is uh, Thorleaf? My husband. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, do we spend the rest of the night chewing the fat, or do we say, uh, green light, leave us go? You said, let's go. Is that right, Sprinkles? I said, uh, leave us go. And we went. Where? To a place that is named Big Burger. Big Burger? Yeah. This is where Lieutenant Moonface McBride takes on his lunch. Don't they have a mess hall on a base? Oh, indeed they do. But this lieutenant, see, he finds something wrong with it. Something wrong? Yeah. On the base, they serve meals that are full of proteins and vitamins and all the good things that give a person rosy cheeks. Whereas, at Big Burger, Lieutenant Moonface is able to consume... Four Big Burgers, four fries, two thick malts, an apple pie and a cherry pie. Uh, put chocolate ice cream on a cherry pie and vanilla on an apple. That's him. Now, the key, it's on a ring. You'll have to lift the whole thing. Uh, just which key is it? It huh? don't matter. Uh, uh, which? You mean you can swipe it off the ring? Please, please, which one is it? Well, it'll be the longest one. But you can't just lift one key from a closed ring. <laughs> please. Now, why don't you go up and say a social hello to Lieutenant Moonface while I go to work, huh? Oh. Hello, Lieutenant McBride. How you doing, Miss Arbelea? Having your lunch, I see. Oh, there's merely a snack, as it were. A snack? Yeah, just keep body and soul together till... Oh! Ah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I spilled oh, a whole man. cup of coffee. And it is all over your nice clean uniform. Here, here. Uh, let me take this napkin and... No, it's all right. No, 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 no. It is not all right. We must wipe away all of this. I have it clean. My burgers and fries are getting cold. Yeah, I shall have you clean in no time at all. And my ice cream is getting warm. There, there, there. Oh, oh. Oh, it all did get cold. Uh, little sister, another order that works for this gentleman. Yeah, well, now, uh... uh you, sir, are fighting for our country. You need all your strength. Yeah, you don't have to. Oh, but I do. I do have to. It's for our country. <laughs> Come on, now. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Eat up. Well, this is very nice of you. Yeah, it is because you uphold the flag. Well, actually, I just run the supply room. Well, they have got a flag in there, too, don't they? <laughs> ah, the flag. I remember it was my favorite poem in school. <clears throat> Sprinkled with white for a cause that is right. 
sprinkled with blue for hearts that are true. Sprinkled with red for those that are bled. The undying story of our own old glory. Mm. That's very noble salmon. I would recite that poem so much they gave me a nickname. Sprinkles. <clears throat> well, it has been a pleasure to serve you, Lieutenant. Enjoy your lunch. And, uh, you got the key. Oh, yeah. While the guy was sitting there, you got the key off the ring, made the impression, and put it back. It is all, uh, how you say, in a day's work, huh? Oh, boy. Then what did you do? Then it was up to Boston City and the husband, Four Leaf. And this guy on the floor, where's he come in? Uh, Lieutenant, he does not yet arrive. What was the next step? I give the impression of the key to Sadie, and she says, meet me tonight, nine o'clock. The corner of Fifth and Roosevelt, which is where I did find myself. On the button. <laughs> Sadie. It's all yours. What is? A carton in the trunk. Now, you take the car. You got a mumble's place. He's expecting you. You give him the guns. He gives you the money. You come back to my house, and we split. Hey, you got the guns, huh? Oh, it was shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, sure, Sprinkles. Sure, I thought you was never going to kill you. Oh, all right, all right, all right, come in. Yeah, leave me set this down. Mumbles it. That must weigh a ton. Yeah. Fifty. Wow. That's what she said, fifty. So you got fifty pieces of merchandise in there, huh? If Boston said he said fifty, then five O is the number. Uh, and now, so Mumbles, uh, the cash, huh? The what? The what? The what? Oh, the cash, sure, sure. But yeah, yeah. First we count the merchandise. We open up the box. It ain't I don't trust nobody. I mean, you get the idea. Oh, I understand your position. <laughs> One time in Chicago, we were... Yeah, yeah. Just take this here crowbar and we... Uh, uh, let me give me a hand, Mumble. You know, I once done time in Seattle. Because, uh, I never thought we'd get her off. A uh, little bit of faith is all you need, Mumbles. And now, come on, we remove this pattern. And here we should have 50 little beauties all lined up in a row. Yeah, yeah, they... Hey, hey, what the... And now, Mumbles, if you will, the cash. Uh, Mumbles, Mumbles, why do you point that, uh, that Roscoe at me? 50 little beauties, sure. You and Sadie. <laughs> you think you can pull a fast one on old Mumbles? Uh, what is it that you are exactly talking about? You drop the box, take the cash, and old Mumbles here holds the bag, huh? What bag? Where are the pistols? The pistols are in a box. Where? Fifty pistols. They should, be, they should be in a box. You know, Mumbles here is going to bump you off. And then he, he, he... Oh, is he going to have a date with Sadie? Hey, Mumbles, listen, I did not mean any harm. I did not drop the box and run, huh? Did I not stay and help? I am as surprised as you are. It was a mistake, an honest mistake. Let us see, shall we, what is inside the box. There ain't no pistols. Well, leave us see. It, it, yeah, it's a, it's a big tube. This thing at the end, something... Something's written down on it. Let me read what it says, huh? Uh, it says... Uh, uh, come on, come on, come on. What are you mumbling about? What does it say? It, uh, it says... Warhead. Type Dionysius. Nuclear. No, you, no, you, what? What did you say? I, I guess it is a Dionysius missile warhead. Sprinkles, get that thing out of here. A warhead? Out! Mumbles, do you comprehend the possibility? Okay. You have a your boys, Mumbles. You, now they can walk into a bank instead of a pistol. They will use this genuine U.S. Dionysius nuclear war. Oh, out. Out. But out. Mumbles, Mumbles, out. you have what no you, imagination. Out. Out. Wait, Sprinkles. That is the missile that's been reported missing. The very same, Lieutenant. Yeah, well, how did you... It, 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 it seems Sadie's husband made him 
little mistake. He picked up the wrong carton. The FBI, the CIA, the whole alphabet's been hunting for this thing, Sprinkles. So I returned to Sadie's house. And when I informed Thorleaf of what he had accomplished, he fainted. <gasps> Thorleaf, darling, speak to me. Oh, Sprinkles, what are we going to do about him? What are we going to do about him? What are we going to do about warhead type Dionysius nuclear? We will not lose our heads. A nuclear missile warhead? I had said only a small one. You mean it was just laying around where anybody could get at it? Oh, no, no. You have no idea the security. There are guards and computer time locks and... Nobody could ever get this thing. Then, then, then how do we get it? All that security is up in the front. Around the back. There's a small door and Sadie, door... you have broken the unwritten rule. You have worked with an amateur. Oh, what could I do? I'm in love. It meant so much to him. Wait, look. We could have an even bigger deal. Yeah, yeah. It's a chance to make the biggest score of all time. And to what kind of score are you referring? We'll sell the warhead. Oh, yeah, yeah. You may be no offense who will purchase a nuclear warhead. Why, it'll be worth a million. No. No, Sadie. Leave me inform you as to our immediate course of action. Wait, Sprinkles. We shall take the warhead back to the army base and leave it on the doorstep. Like I was a newborn baby. Look, Sprinkles, you've got to listen to me. Did I not already listen to you? Were you not going to steal 50 pistols for us to... This time we're going to make a fortune. I do not think so. We are going to sell this warhead. And I know who would want to buy it. You do? I know just the customer. I know just the right customer. <laughs> A customer for a fully armed nuclear warhead? Who would want to buy one? Now, uh, there are all sorts of interesting possibilities, all kinds of potential situations. And when you consider our good friend Sprinkles and the company he keeps, the permutations and combinations, well, they add up to infinity. But that three is only a few minutes. substitute for hard work, said Mr. Thomas Alva Edison. And of course he was right. Those who choose to chase easy money soon find themselves working harder and harder to catch it. And somehow it just keeps eluding the grasp. As Mr. Sprinkles Magoon, our protagonist, has discovered. I know who'll buy a missile. Who? Who do you think? An enemy agent. A what? You heard me, an enemy agent. But Sadie... But Sadie, what? I do not think it is right. Why not? Well... They'll pay a big price. Sadie, money is not all there is to life. Oh, I agree with that 100%. And this is a sacred thing, Sadie. How do you know? Well, I I, I, I figured... Look, I, I just figured it out. Look, either it's a secret thing or it ain't, right? Well, yes, right. Well, if it ain't a secret, then the enemy already knows about it and there's no harm done, right? Right. And it's okay to sell it, right? Uh, yeah, right. But what if it is a secret? Then, then we cannot sell it. Then we have to sell it. We do? Oh, sure. I'm afraid I do not see why. So we can make sure there will be peace in the world. How does that work? Well, you see, the enemy will now know what kind of secret weapon we got. What it can do to him if he steps out of line. What's going to happen if he tries to mess around with a good old United States of America? You see? I, uh, I, I... Oh, Sprinkles. How else is he going to know how important it is for him to behave himself? Uh, I've done many a job in my life, but this is the first one I ever done that was going to help my country, too. And, uh, Sadie, just where are you going to discover an enemy agent? Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. Don't you read the papers? The country's full of enemy agents. It's just a detail, you understand? Sooner or later, we're bound to find one. And did you find one, Sprinkles? Yes, Lieutenant. We found Mr. Cherry Berry. The dead guy on the floor? The exact self-same person, Lieutenant. He's an enemy agent? I fear you are correct. Well, how, uh, how did you get to him? 
Uh, they say the country's full of enemy agents. Uh, they could be right. But enemy agents are like taxi cabs. There's never any around when you need one. Then where did you get this, uh, Mr. Chiri Piri? Well, you are no doubt aware of the French language expression, Church is la femme. Oh, yeah, I think so. It means you should always look for the name. Sprinkles, I'm always amazed at your, uh, what's the word, uh, erudition. Yeah, I am a self-educated person, Lieutenant. I uh, hang around libraries and museums where I read books and I admire pictures and also pick up games. Oh, yeah. I heard they were good places. Yeah, especially smart, skinny ones. Not my type. Well, as they say in the Latin language, they gusti bus non disputandum. What does that mean? Do not spit into the wind. Uh, well, getting back to Mr. Chibi Piri, uh, Riga Mortis has already set in, and we have yet to account for him. There is a lady of my acquaintance, see? She has a certain type of establishment. I, I shall not tell you her name, but I shall refer to him from now on as Madame Penis. An excellent alias. Yeah, she meets all kinds of people. I wouldn't doubt it. And so one night I figured I would just uh, drop by for a, a sociable chat. Sprinkles. <laughs> oh, it's tricks, Venus. Oh, like there's no tomorrow. That is good. Uh, Venus, uh, you could do something for me. Sprinkles, honey, all you have to do is name it. Uh, Venus, you got all kinds of, uh... Uh, people here. Well, you know the saying. Through these portals pass all of mankind. Yeah, doctors, lawyers, politicians. You name it. Uh, uh do you ever get a... an enemy agent? Why do you ask? I need one. I don't know. I sure could use an enemy agent. Well, I'm sure we get an occasional enemy agent now and then, but I... Uh, but what? We can't go around telling everybody. It would be bad for business. You'd be surprised who comes in here. But uh, you wouldn't be telling everybody. Just me. Well, I'd like to do it, Sprinkles, but... Uh, Venus, I'm not asking this for myself. No? It is for the good of our country. Oh, well, that's different. I'll notify my uh, associates here and... We'll see how we can turn up. <laughs> This is Mr. Sprinkles Magoon. Oh. Uh, uh, this is um, uh, Sprinkles Magoon, yes. Ah, we have connected. Hey, hey, do you know what time it is? It is half past three o'clock a.m. Well, uh, well uh, what is it you want? <laughs> I am the person you have been looking for. Uh, the poison man. Uh, the I, name Madame Venus means something to you. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. And you have uh, something for me? Uh, I would have something for you if you would have something for me. <laughs> I understand. One hand must wash the other. <laughs> what have you got? Uh, I have got a nuclear warhead. What kind of nuclear warhead? A U.S. nuclear warhead. Is that not uh, sufficient? No, we have so many. Tell me what one you have, and I shall see if it is worth my time and trouble. Uh, the one I have is called the uh, Dionysius. The Dionysius? Are you sure? Uh, that's how it's labeled. Uh, now, uh, how much are you going to pay for it, huh? How much? Wait. Uh, wait for what? Wait till I consult my price list. Let me see. Mm. Ah, here. Dionysius, $10,000. $10,000? Is that all? But you are free, of course, to try somewhere else. But you will find that we pay top price. But it is, uh, it is worth... Uh, it, it should be worth a lot more than that. My friend, this is not a seller's market. Uh, I am not sure. Mr. Sprinkles, bring here the merchandise. We will have a glass of wine. We will talk, and uh, we will see. Uh, well, uh, okay. You come 
to 98 St. Regis Place, apartment 10B. Ah, come in, Mr. Sprinkles Magon. I am Mr. Chiriviri. I am uh, <coughs> pleased to meet you. <laughs> now, let us see what you have for me. Uh, here it is, just what I said. The Dionysius warhead. Uh -huh. ah. ah, so, yes, the Dionysius warhead. It is excellent, uh, excellent. Good. Now uh, that you see the merchandise, uh, let's talk. Money. We agreed on 10,000, yes? No, 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 no. You said 10,000. Ah, well, uh, 15, 20. Too much. It is not your money. True, but I must not exceed my budget. You give a little, I will give a lot. Uh, uh, leave us, make it 17,5. Ah, my soft heart, it will be the death of me. <laughs> Sold, my friend. You have done well for yourself. Cash. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Let me count it out for you. I'm uh, sorry, I cannot take a check. I understand. One thousand, two thousand, three... <laughs> How convenient it would be if I could use a credit card. Uh, but I do not suppose it would be practical. <laughs> yeah. uh, Seventeen thousand and five hundred. There you are. Thank you very much. Now, a glass of wine. I never touch the stuff. Then, Mr. Sprinkles, I bid you good night. And may we do more business in the near future. I do not think so. Oh, have you any complaints about how you have been treated? No, 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 it's not that. It's just I am not in this business. Oh, I see. I only show you this little item for one reason. I understand. For money. No, 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 no. Do not delude yourself. That money was just for expenses. Well, then why have you sold me the warhead? So you can learn what it does. And this will make you think twice about getting funny with the United States of America. Ah, Mr. Sprinkles, to begin, we already know what the warhead does. You... You do? Of course. The Dionysius missile, named after the ancient god of wine. It is fired into a concentration of advancing troops. It explodes and sends fumes of pure whiskey in such great strength that the soldiers fall to the ground in a drunken stupor. Is, is that what it does? But of course. And you know it all the time? To be sure. Oh. And this will help us to conquer your decadent democracy. Not just for us. Ah, yes, just... we shall bring you true freedom, full liberty, complete justice. Wait a minute. And anyone what... who does not like it, we shall put him against the wall. -da 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 -da. That is how to deal with all the enemies of the people. Do you agree? Hold on, Mr. Tuck. And we shall tear down that flag. What flag? The flag of oppression. The American flag. Oh, no. You will it not. It shall never again fly and pollute the breeze. You cannot talk that way about all glory. The deal is off. You are beginning to talk like an enemy of the people. Here's your money. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And I am taken back that missile. Uh, you fool, stand back. That little heater does not scare me. Do not take one more step. I said the deal is off. I have warned you. Hey, 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 let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Mr. Cherry Berry. Uh, 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 Mr. Cherry Berry. This is Flummer. I'm at 98 St. Regis, apartment 10B. I got one dead body, one Dionysius nuclear warhead. I got one prime suspect. You better call the FBI, the CIA, and anybody else who wants a piece of this. And uh, that is my uh, story, Sergeant Flummer. Yeah. Sprinkles... I have to arrest you for the murder of Mr. Chibi Beery. And I will have to inform you that as of now, anything you say could be used against you. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Sprinkles, uh, how did that poem go again? Sprinkled with white, 
for a chorus that is right. Sprinkled with blue for hearts that are true. What's this? You never read about the murder? You never read about sprinkles and a missing warhead? I'll tell you what happened. The big wheels decided to hush it up. And then somebody figures maybe Sprinkles in the dip. But he's a member of one of the security outfits and don't want to blow his cover. Anyhow, Sprinkles is out on the streets. Alive and well. And either lifting wallets or trapping foreign agents. Take your pick. And what do you think? Me? I don't know. It could be either of the alternatives that Lieutenant Flummer suggests, or it might be a third. Who knows? One thing and one thing only is for sure. I shall be back in just a short while. I suppose it began way back in Exodus, where it is written, spies were sent to spy out the land. And we've had spies ever since. Spying, as you know, is supposed to be a serious business. And therefore, that is really what's funny about it. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. You collect pictures of old homes, don't you, Ben? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like them. Uh, they give me a sense of uh, continuity mm-hmm. yeah, and stability. Yeah, here we are. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful house. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that's a pretty good engraving. All it lacks is a figure in the foreground to give it a focal point. Well, there is a figure in the foreground. <laughs> no, wrong. Oh, well, there is, really. Take a look. Oh, but both Diane and I... Well, let me see. There. You see? Next to the path. The figure of a man on his hands and knees crawling towards the house. Uh, I I swear. I swear, too. When you showed me the engraving, Ted, there was no figure. Well, maybe maybe you just glanced at it. No, no. We looked at it under the light. There was nothing in the foreground. (laughs) Well, there is now. A man furtively crawling across the lawn toward the porch. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.